It's time for pharmacy class with an F. I'm Tanya Snyder from the Wild Carrot Farmstead. I thought today we would just talk. Let's talk about infused oils. Like my favorite thing to talk about. Um, if you're going to be in North Carolina next weekend, I'm talking about it in person. I get to speak at an awesome farm where you live convention. We're going to be chatting about um, herbalism in your backyard, using what you have in your own environment that you can get from foraging locally off of your land. The basis of our skincare line starts with often an infused oil. Um, and infused oils are so easy. There's a few ways you can make an infused oil and that is the traditional method where you take your product either you know an herb or your flower and you dry it and then you put it into a clean sterilized glass jar and just pour your carrier oil of choice over the top of it set it somewhere warm and out of the way for four to six weeks and it infuses naturally that way that's one method there's another method to excel that process. You do everything the exact same way other than you set it in the sun in the summertime, like kind of like a um, iced tea, like a sun tea, and it'll let the sun and the heat accelerate that infusion for about 24 hours. That's also a way. And the third way you can infuse your oil is by slowly heating it almost like a double broiler boiler over the top of a stove top so with you know you get your pot with water gently boiling put your sterilized jar in your herb flour into your jar pour your oil over it, and then heat it on low over the stove top for a couple hours that will also give you an excellent infusion so my favorite method however is the old-fashioned way for me, this is why. It doesn't use electricity, it doesn't take much of my time, and ultimately it allows for me to process a large amount of product quickly. So I can practically grab my huge harvest or forage, dry it, grab it by a handful, shove it in the jars, pour oil over it, and set it and forget about it. And to be honest, that's what works for me. And also, I like setting it and forgetting it. You'd be surprised how quick four to six weeks goes. And to be quite honest, I think that gives the most potent, strongest infusions is the old fashioned way. Um, that could just be an opinion, but that's the way I prefer. So as I mentioned before, infused oils are the basis, like the groundwork of our skincare line. It's how we get the medicinal properties of a plant into our skincare. We basically, instead of anywhere like a recipe, would use extra virgin olive oil, for example. Instead of just using extra virgin olive oil, why not infuse it and make it extra? Another reason I love infused oils, it's an excellent way to preserve your forage. After you get it, Often we're like, what do we do with it? You know, do you hang it to dry? How do you store it? Do you put it in jars, bags? What do you do with it? Well, infuse it. That is a great way to store it. It keeps it and it is making something at the same time. I love that about oil infusion. Often I hear people mention putting fresh herb into the infusions, taking a freshly picked flower herb, putting it in your jar, and then putting your oil over it. I personally was not trained to do it that way and don't recommend that, and here's why. Oil and water, oil and moisture don't mix. So if you're putting something that is full of moisture into your oil infusion, the oil is not going to have a chance to fully penetrate that product it's going to the moisture in that flower is going to repel the oil keeping it from fully infusing and drawing out those medicinal properties so i always dry the product first now that can sound like an extra step or be very difficult it's not when i'm saying drying you don't have to dehydrate it though you can 
All you really have to do is hang them up, especially if we're talking about the summertime, which is often when we are foraging or the late spring where it's warm anyways. If you have a place with good airflow that you can tie them up in bundles and hang them upside down under the sun, that is an excellent way to dry them. Another way that's super easy is using old screens, like an old screen door, old screen windows if you have them. By laying out your flowers on that, the screen is very tiny mesh, so nothing falls through but allows airflow. That's another great way to dry them out, again, by the air. They will dry out as long as there's airflow and plenty of sunshine and warmth. That is how I do them. So I gather my forage, I tie them up, that's my first step, and I get them dried. They are dried in a day or two. <clears throat> Second step is to take your jars, dry them out, sterilize them really good. Now, how do you sterilize a jar? All you have to do is boil them for about 15 minutes and then dry them very well. And then they are ready to put your herb or dried herb or flower into. The third step is adding your carrier oil. Let's stop here for a minute and talk about carrier oils. What oil would you use? Now that depends on several things. What are you, what is your final end all goal? What are you going to use your final product for? Anything specific? or more of do you want an oil that you can use to craft several things. Um, for versatility and flexibility, I love extra virgin olive oil. As single source as you can get, made in the US if you can. Um, I hear that Costco, believe it or not, their brand is one of the best ones you can source. Um, it is, if you don't know, olive oil is a whole thing, um, a whole nother world. Maybe we'll talk about that again or visit that more, you know, in depth, but that's a touch on that. Another awesome carrier oil that I just love is Yohaba oil, that deep golden color. It's beautiful and great for your hair and your skin. It is luxurious. That's one I use often. You can use a um, macadamia nut oil, a fraction coconut oil, a sweet almond oil. There are many different carrier oils you can choose from. We all tend to have our preferences and our likes and dislikes for various reasons. But for me, I often go with a nice Evu, the extra virgin olive oil, or a Yohaba oil. So that would be our next step is to after we put our herb into our sterilized jars to top it with our oil. Now you wanna make sure that your oil is completely covering your jar and I tend to leave about a half inch headspace from the top. I lit it and then I also put what it is and the date that I made it. You think you're gonna remember, but like I always say, you won't. So that will help you. If you wanna take another step further, right the date that that infusion is done. That is extra handy. And as I mentioned earlier, then you would put it somewhere away warm and out of the way. If you have an apothecary shelf, that would be ideal. And you're gonna just let it sit for four to six weeks. Now what happens if you forget about it and it infuses longer? Well, that is okay. It will just be that much stronger, that much more packed with medicinal benefits it will not hurt anything. It is forgiving, and that's another thing I just love so much about infusions. And after the time has elapsed, your infusion is ready. Now you have an awesome home infused, sustainable oil that you started from, maybe with even dandelions from the ground. I make a dandelion infused tallow lotion bar this time of year. It's wonderful and it starts with dandelions that we pick and infuse into an extra virgin olive oil. Now that you have your lovely oil, what do you do with it from here? This is where it gets fun. You can do so much. You can then split, strain your oil off and then compost your flower or, or herb, if there's something else you can do with it. For example, if it's a, you know, say a thyme infusion, you could take those oily thyme herbs that you strain off, incorporate it into a bread, 
of some sort. There's so many things you can do. Um, at the very least, get it into your compost. Now you can take that oil and break it down into amber colored dropper bottles and just use the oil. That is wonderful to have on hand. But you can also simply take that oil and now make a balm. You can make salves, chapsticks, lotions, soaps, all from your oil. So do you see what I mean by saying that that is like the foundation of infused skincare? This concept is also easy. I don't even need to demonstrate it. If you want though to see more demonstrations, check out our Instagram account, The Wild Carrot Farmstead, where we are demonstrating what to do with the oil after you make it. I'll give you a super easy trick. Taking an oil and turning it into a balm is so easy. All you have to do is remember a ratio. And what's super cool about ratios is you don't even need a scale or any kind of measurement. You just need the same size of container because it's parts. So to make a balm, it would be three parts oil to one part beeswax. So for example, say you have Let's see. I have, so say you have this bowl. This would be three bowls of oil this size to one bowl of beeswax. Then you would just melt that down over a double boiler and you would have a bomb by pouring it off into tins and letting it set. Easy, right? You wanna make a sap from it It'd be a 3-1-1 ratio, which is three parts oil, one part beeswax, and one part butter, like a cocoa butter, shea butter. Now you have a salve. See how all of this builds on itself? It is so awesome. Next time you make a soap, all you have to do is swap out your oil that your recipe calls for and use your infused oil that you made with us at home. Now you have an infused soap bar instead of just a standard soap bar. Is that not awesome? All right, so we're all hyped up. We're all ready to infuse some things. What are we going to forage or harvest for our infusions? Let me give you a few things um, that you can go out today and look for that you don't need a farm, you don't need land. You can literally check your backyard, a local park, go on a hike. Now the only thing to note when I say this is make sure of course that your land that you're foraging on is public grounds, isn't sprayed with pesticides. Keep these things in mind. If you're looking along roadways, you do not want busy roadways. You don't want to be too close to the roadside because we are concerned a bit with emissions, what is getting on those plants. Um, taking them home and rinsing them off does help. You want to do that either way to maybe make, you know, make sure dust and bugs aren't on there. I didn't mention that before. Um, before you dry them, that's a good tip there as well. So we have all of that in mind. Some things that we can go look for are dandelions. That is a great one. Everyone knows about the great dandelion. You can infuse that into an oil. Pin bit and dead nettle, the one that everyone confuses for honeysuckle. It's the low cover crop with the four little um, like tuber purple flowers poking out from the top of a wild rose. That's a great one to make a beautiful, lovely skincare from. Red clover is another one to go searching for. It's purple, green clover leaves with the purple kind of bulbous round head. That's a great one. Some plants to check out later in the summer, bee balm and soap wart. Something to plant and infuse into oils. Calendula, get that started if you haven't already. That is the great skincare powerhouse. I love calendula everything. It is packed so many skincare benefits. Um, I'm trying to think of what else are great ones that we forge. St. John's wart. That's one you can find. Mullen. These are all a little bit later in the summer, but take note so you're ready to go when they do come in. Um, elderberry, elderberry blossom. That's a great one. 
These are all excellent and easy to find. Again, you don't need anything besides a nice, beautiful walk out in nature to find them. I hope this all sinks in for you. This is a great starting point for this season. I hope this empowers you. It keeps it simple. It's so simple, there's no reason to even demonstrate anything. Take your dried flowers, put them in a jar, pour oil over them. Do you have to go out and forage them? No. Find an apothecary store that supplies herbs. Um, better than that, a farmer that does it, that also dries them and sells them, purchase them from them. You don't have to go out if that's not your thing, trekking through woods and forests. It's as simple as this, get your flour, put it in your sterilized jar, top it with your favorite carrier oil, put it away for four to six weeks, enjoy after that. Have a great afternoon. Thank you for joining me this Monday for another episode of Wild Care Farm Sense Pharmacy Class. Have a good day. I love you all. Is that not awesome? Go infuse some things today.